Behind me is a platoon of four Vickers medium machine guns set up for indirect fire, much as they would have been in February 1945. We have a platoon made up of four guns, but a machine gun company would typically have deployed up to 12 guns. With a rate of fire of around 500 rounds per minute, the belt-fed water-cooled Vickers was a formidable weapon. It first entered service with the British Army in 1912, and by the start of the Second World War, its role was primarily as a direct and indirect support weapon. To put the gun's role during Operation Veritable into perspective, 96 Vickers guns on the left flank of the front line fired a total of 1.3 million rounds during the initial bombardment of enemy positions. The training of the Vickers gun crews meant that they were uniquely capable of what's known as indirect fire. Firing over extreme ranges, the rounds arced over the battlefield down onto the areas occupied by the enemy. The aim was not to solely kill the enemy, but to interdict their movement and keep them pinned down. During the Rhineland campaign, the guns carried out a type of bombardment called the pepper pot. As part of the preliminary bombardments by artillery, these pepper pots were organised to include all available firepower. They consisted of the division's machine gun battalion, mortars and all other available divisional resources, including everything from light anti-aircraft cannons to anti-tank guns. These groups were the pot, and their fire was the pepper they would sprinkle on the German lines. Their task was to thoroughly saturate enemy positions from 0530 to 1030, just before the launch of the attack. 30 Corps' after-action report on Veritable noted, All accounts show that the pepper pot justified the apparent heavy expenditure of ammunition, and was a definite factor in the success of the general fire plan. It was believed that it wasn't the size of the shell, but the number of rounds fired that was the key. Lieutenant Colonel E. G. Johnson, commander of the Toronto Scottish, a machine gun battalion with the 2nd Canadian Infantry Division, organised his division's pepper pot fire plan. He later explained that the fire would be as irregular as possible. The effect of having deliberately erratic fire come down meant that the enemy could not know when it would stop or start, and this had the desired result of reducing his morale. Johnson described many of the prisoners captured after the division's initial advance as completely addled by the bombardment. The Canadian First Army's intelligence report noted that captured German troops said the bombardment put a prolonged strain on the nerves. They had an impression of an overwhelming force opposed to them, which in their isolated state, they felt it was useless to resist. The machine gun battalions continued to support the advance as the 21st Army Group pushed southeast. Several weeks later, during fighting near Emmerich, the machine gun companies of the 2nd Battalion Middlesex Regiment fired a staggering 675,000 rounds during four days of continuous slow-rate firing. By the end of this, the battalion's official history noted that some of the guns were almost falling to pieces. The machine gun battalions were in action throughout the campaign, and Lieutenant Reginald Fendick recalls that his company of the 2nd Middlesex were all pretty exhausted. He wrote, From our arrival in the Rhineland on the 24th of February, We'd been on the go, hard, and the guns were only out of action while moving to a new position. Night and day there had been shoots, wreckies and moves over tracks deep in mud, a lot of shelling and mines all over the place, and the rain had been continuous. To give you an idea of the scale of a pepper pot bombardment, before Operation Plunder, three machine gun battalions, a tank battalion, two anti-tank battalions and three light anti-aircraft battalions were tasked with firing on German positions. This amounted to 22 75mm guns, 48 17 pounder anti-tank guns, 72 40mm Bofors guns, 36 4.2 inch mortars and 108 Vickers medium machine guns. A huge volume of fire. In the end, Operations Veritable and Varsity were successes, crossing the Rhine and opening the way for the Western Allies advance into Germany. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this series of videos looking at some of the weapons used during the Rhineland campaign. If you missed any of the earlier videos, check out the playlist at the end of the video and in the description box below. My thanks to Real Time History, to Darren Andrews for his camera work, and to the guys of the Vickers Machine Gun Research Collection and Association, who brought out the Vickers and persevered with me through the rain. If you'd like a behind the scenes look at the shoot, check out Robbie McGuire's video and if you'd like to learn more about the Vickers, check out the Vickers MG channel.
Thanks again for watching. If you stuck around for the credits, please do share the video with friends. And if you can support Tab via Patreon, we are an entirely community supported channel and your support means a lot to us. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Shot, I use that one, cost all the money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>